Hello and welcome back to ERU, where we round up the biggest results and talking points from across European football. Joining me today, Doogie Critchley, we've got Henry Hill. Henry, how are you? Yeah, really good, thanks, Dukes. I feel like it was a big weekend for European football. Mm. Uh, the, the tables look a lot different to where they started. I remember we were saying on Continental Club that we thought Betis were maybe a shoe in for the top four now. And now they're in fifth after, uh, yeah. after sort of battering Atletico, but... Still coming out um, as the losers, a classic Atletico win. But yeah, I'm good. Uh, my team, my national team, Dorking, is still riding high. You've been at Sunderland this weekend. How was that? I was. Uh, it was a nil-nil draw in Ooh. in the drizzle uh, in, a, in a South London. Not particularly nice day, but yeah, it was it was okay to be honest. As nil-nil draws go, we were by far the better team. I thought Charlton were pretty average on the day, but we didn't probably create quite enough and didn't take our chances. So. Yeah, the unbeaten run stretches to three games, Go which, on. considering where we were in January, is a, you know a nice little bit of progress. But no, we are real, well and truly in the mix for the playoff spot. What was Fulham's result this weekend? Uh, I believe we got another victory. I think Harry Wilson... No, we beat Blackburn. We beat Blackburn 3-1, I think. Love so it. we're riding... What I love, though is that Huddersfield are in second place, but have played five more games than the team in third. I don't understand how that's happened. Uh, so yeah, yeah, it's it's all a bit warped at the moment, but all you need to know is Mitrovic is firing Fulham back to the Premier League. He's still doing it, he's still doing it. Yeah, it's a shame. A lot of other leagues around Europe didn't really do this sort of, you can take a game off if you get a COVID, you know, a couple of COVID cases, whereas England were way too lax with that. And I yeah. think it slightly warped the tables in England. It's a bit of a shame. But anyway, let's crack on with today's show. And the story of the week, because we've got a Chelsea player in Andreas Christensen, who is supposedly close to joining Barcelona this week. What's the news on this one, Henry? Yeah, this has been rumbling on for a while now, hasn't it? It's good for the player, I think, and great for Barcelona. Um, According to Fabrizio Romano, the man who seems to know everything, he's tweeted that final details missing, but a new meeting expected next week to complete the deal. That's for the 25-year-old to join Barcelona on a free transfer, as we all know, it's uh, it's been rumbling on with his contract, whether or not he's going to stay, is he going to go at Chelsea, and he's still been used a lot this season, actually, mm. by Thomas Ducal, which I think really shows kind of the, uh, the credit he has in the bank at the club, the Danish centre-half, but yeah, Barcelona have come in for him, I think it was between Barcelona and Bayern Munich in order to pick him up, but I think his wage demands were just simply too much, I mean, if, Bar- if Bayern weren't going to give sort of Nicolas Sula, what he wanted, they certainly weren't going to give Christensen sort of a bumper pay rise to go over to Bavaria. But yeah, I, 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 Barca have finally got their man. And I do think this is a really solid addition. 153 games under his belt at Chelsea, four trophies, including, including the Champions League, 54 caps for Denmark. I mean, he, he, he's, he's a great player, in my opinion. And it looks like Chelsea have got a bit of work to do restructuring that defence in the summer, don't they? They've got you know, mm. Thiago Silva, who's not getting any younger. Alonso, 31, who's had a bit of renaissance, but still. Shalabar, Saar, Chilwell, James. A uh, few injuries knocking around that side. And it looks like Azpilicueta and Rudiger could leave as well. So as if Chelsea didn't need any more of a headache, this, this news is going to give it to them right now. I mean, do, do you agree with me on sort of Christensen being a quality player? Because I think he could have easily have stayed at that Chelsea and had a much longer, prosperous future. Yeah, I think they were trying really hard to keep him at, at certain stages, but it seemed like for the last few months it was pretty much sealed. Yeah, I agree with you. I think he's a great player. I think physically he sometimes has struggled in the past um, against the very more, you know strong and quick strikers. I think Dominic Calvert-Lewin, I think, gave him a very tough game. Yeah. At Goodison, I think that was under Frank Lampard as well. But his passing, which is obviously going to be crucial at Barcelona, is generally excellent. Uh, this season, he averages 64 passes per game with an 88% pass accuracy. That's actually the only time in the last four seasons uh, it's been below 90. He's not probably the most progressive with it, but still four progressive passes. So passes going over 10 yards towards the opponent's goal per 90. But that's still more than Piquet's 3.8 and nearly double, double Araujo's 2.2. He's also an excellent reader of the game, three interceptions per 90. That's in the 94th percentile, so only 6% of centre-backs in Europe complete more interceptions than him in the last, I think that's over the last year, that is. The only issue is, and I say this with a slight caveat, is that he's slightly injury-prone. Uh, he's missed nine games this season. He's missed at least four in the last three, which isn't a massive number, but his starts in the league have never really been that high because mm. he's obviously faced a, a level of competition as well. And he's generally shone in a three at the back formation, first under Antonio Conte 
and since Thomas Tuchel's arrival as well, whereas Barcelona will definitely be playing with a four at the back, so that could be an issue. But with the free, for it being a free transfer, it's a pretty much a no-brainer as well. And it means that Barcelona have really cleverly used the free market in the last year or so. They'd have signed Aubameyang, uh, Eric Garcia, Memphis Depay, Aguero and Christensen on free transfers if that deal goes through. With varying degrees of success, of course, Sergio Aguero had to retire, unfortunately, due to that heart issue. But yeah, I think that Christensen would be a very solid addition alongside Araujo going forward. Mm -hmm. I think that's a pretty solid duo. Araujo, very physical, um, would seem to complement Christensen's more languid style of play, his passing as well. So overall, it's been a pretty good period for Barcelona, hasn't it, Henry? Like their form's really picked up as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think, as you say, some really smart additions. I think they need to get that new Araujo contract over mm. the line, there's talks about whether or not um, he's going to stay or go because there will be lots of players, um, sorry, clubs interested in him. But yeah, Barcelona, uh, Aubameyang looks to be a quality pickup. They look flooded with talent across the board. I think a couple of transfer windows just to sort of iron out this squad under Xavi, give him time. Looks like they're going to get Champions League football next season after all. Could even get even Pip Sevilla to second um, mm, the way their form's going at the moment. So, yeah, I, 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 these are really exciting times. Uh, well, exciting times. Considering where they were at the start of the season, these are very promising signs for yeah. Barcelona. And, you know, fair play to Xavi for going in and making the impact that we. some of us were on the fence about whether or not he'd really be able to do. Yeah, no, fair play to him. Massive turnaround since the Ronald Koeman days and before that, Kike Setien, etc. So, well done to him. Guys, what do you think of Christensen to Barcelona? And Chelsea fans, are you concerned by this news or do you think there'll be a late twist of fate and an end up extending? Let us know in the comments down below and let's move on to our result of the week. Our result of the week this week comes in from at Ford's Ashley. Now, I thought Nantes were unlucky not to get uh, mm. the nod for this a few weeks ago when they beat PSG. But this week, we haven't overlooked Nice beating PSG 1-0 at home. Not a seismic game in terms of the table, but still a great result in terms of league. And nonetheless, Dukes, what happened? Yeah, the replies to my tweet were endless about this game, so we thought we might as well include it. There were some other shouts. It's worth mentioning to Swolo. Their form continues with that 4-1 thrashing of Venezia. Milan beating Napoli 1-0. I think I predicted that on Continental Club as well, but I think there weren't. that was my only perfect score. So I think it still could be tight, but Olivier Giroud... Coming up clutch once again. Atleti beating Real Betis in that game we've already mentioned. But Celta Vigo 4, Mallorca 3 could well have been it. Iago Aspas continuing to defy father time in that game. But as I said, most of the suggestions were about Nice's 1-0 victory over PSG, which was sealed by that 88th minute winner by Andy Delort. What a goal it was yeah. too. Sort of half volleyed uh, effort from uh, Calvin Stengs' cross. Uh, but this game just went to show just how much PSG miss Mbappe. Pochettino started with a front three, a very experienced front three, a one full of quality, uh, Neymar, Messi and Di Maria. But they only managed two shots on target between them. Mbappe was suspended for this game and they really missed his, his running in behind, his all-round game really. He probably has been the outstanding player in Europe so far this season. Uh, PSG really struggled to get going. They had 57% possession, but they only had eight shots with those two shots on target to Nice's 11. Seven and six. XG had it at 1.2 to 0.6 in their opponent's favour. That was just the second time in 27 league on games that they've created less than one XG so far this season. PSG, get this, have now lost two of their last three league on games. Also that 3-1 loss to Nantes, as we mentioned. That's as many as they'd lost in their previous 32, but they are still 13 points clear at the top of Liga, but this was, I suppose, the main concern for this one was it was just sort of less than ideal preparation for that trip to the Bernabeu on Wednesday. They've got that 1-0 lead to defend. Uh, Real Madrid looked in fantastic form during their thrashing of Real Sociedad 4-1 with some great goals from Modric mm. and Camavinga, well worth checking out as well. But Henry, I think it's well worth in this scenario, you know, forgetting about PSG for a while and heaping some praise on Nice. Yeah, I'm going to go in on PSG at some point, but yeah, I mean, I I love this Nice side. What Gautier is doing there, he's the best manager in in uh, the French top flight at the moment. I don't care what anyone says. The Pochettino haters, uh, lovers can come at me if you want. What Gautier's done for this Nice side is remarkable. They've now won seven of their last 10 league and games and keeping a clean sheet in their last three. They also reached that, you know, Coupe de France final as well, uh, where they're coming up against Nantes, actually. So that's going to be a, a massive game for both of those both of those two. I mean, I mean, no team in France has won more than their 22 points in the last 10 games. Uh, it's 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 remarkable how he can go from 
transforming Lille into Nice and make such a positive impact. Obviously, they do have a bit of money. Obviously, they are backed uh, relative to other clubs in France. But still, you've got to make the right additions. You've got to get bring in the right manager. And it looks like they're doing that at the moment. And they look incredibly hard to beat. They've only conceded 21 league goals. That's three fewer than the next best PSG. And only five sides in Europe. Sevilla, Chelsea, City, Napoli, big teams have conceded fewer than... Nice at the moment. I mean, this is the third time that the two have met uh, this season, Nice and PSG, and they remain unbeaten. Nil-nil in their first league game, beat them on penalties into Coupe de France, uh, and also won, won one and drew one of their league games with PSG last year. So, I mean, I've always said this, I think when teams do come up against PSG, I, in other leagues, I think a lot of teams sort of bow down against the bigger sides. But I think in France, because there's such that almost rear guard action when it comes to sort of pride when it comes to facing the big sides. I think they do step up their game. We're seeing that with Nice once more. I mean, if we look at this game in particular, Lamina, I thought he was decent for Fulham, but he's been fantastic over on the south coast of France at central midfield, alongside Pablo Rosario, who had a solid game. You know, two tackles and one interceptions, one aerial dual win, one dribble. 93% pass accuracy. I mean, it's really important to stress if it, although they had less possession, it did feel like they absolutely dominated uh, this mm. PSG side. They really got the better of them going forward. I mean, Guiri, who I think is going to be a massive star, definitely should have bagged um, one, at least one in the first half. I think he, he's so dangerous when he gets into that box, isn't he, at the moment? And then Calvin Stengs as well. What a pickup that is from RZ. He deserves credit for that cross for Andy Delort. As you say, Dukes, really, really brilliant goal. But I mean, come on, like PSG, I don't care if you're missing Mbappe. If you've got Di Maria, Neymar, and was it Messi, Messi. up front, that's that's that should be enough. That should be enough to beat any defense uh, at the moment, e even the most, even the toughest coming out of France. So it's it's funny as you say, 13 points clear at the top. So it doesn't really make it doesn't matter in many ways. But still, these are worrying signs. And as you say, I backed Real Madrid to beat. Um, PSG over two legs in the Champions League and I'm sticking to my guns in that one I really am I just do I just think as we're seeing in the, in, oh, although the Champions League is almost like a free hit for PSG in terms of the way the team seems to be playing I just think against the tougher sides and the biggest moments at the moment they are really struggling to get results I mean that Real Madrid game looks like a complete fluke um, in the, the first mm. leg compared to other ones but yeah I mean Dukes where, where do you stand on that next match because I, 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 I'm concerned for PSG at the moment yeah, I mean, momentum obviously with Real Madrid, but they, they did just look quite a bit better than them in that first leg. And I was really surprised by Ancelotti's setup in that in that first leg. Real Madrid incredibly defensive. Obviously at the Bernabeu, they're now 1-0 down. They have to go and assert themselves on their opponents more. And in Vinicius Junior, Benzema, Modric, Camavinga, etc. You've got some players in great form. So I'm expecting an absolute classic. But at the moment, I'm still going to say that PSG have enough to go through. Um, but we shall see. We shall see. Guys, what do you think is going to happen in that game? Let us know. And do you see any way that PSG could throw away this lead in Liga? Probably not. But let us know about the clash on Wednesday mainly in the comments down below. And let's move on to our Star of the Week. Okay, it's time for Star of the Week, everyone's favourite section. And this week we're going for Laitaro Martinez. This comes in from at Liam Hawkins, one regular contributor. Thank you very much, Liam. Henry, what, on, what went on with this one? Yeah, I mean... If if any of a team need, if a player was in a goal drought, if a team were in a difficult situation, perhaps playing Salerno Tala was the sort of perfect cure. That's harsh. Uh, they drew with Milan the other day. Oh yeah, maybe you're right. But no, listen. Uh, I thought they started the game quite promisingly. But yes, Lautaro Martinez ended his eight-game goal drought in spectacular fashion. Clinical hat trick uh, as Inter Milan emerged five nil winners. They're now second, one point behind Milan with a game in hand. Um, the title race in Italy looks. So tasty, it's unbelievable mm. right now, switching hands um, all the time. But yeah, the Nerazzurri had only won two of their last, uh, of their seven league games in 2022 under quite a bit of pressure. But, you know, they got exactly what you'd want from a strike partnership, didn't they? And uh, Lautaro getting his hat trick, Dzeko getting two goals. I think Dzeko laying on a great cross for uh, Lautaro for one of those goals. Certainly, um, just a really, really good relationship. And his his all round game, uh, the Argentine was pretty solid. One tackle, one key pass, ten shots, three goals, hit the post as well. Now it's fourteen goals and two assists in twenty five league games this season. That's a goal or assist every ninety nine minutes. I'm never quite sure if I think he's truly elite as a player, but you can't look past his performance in this game. Just an absolute um, masterclass in the box. Salernitana couldn't 
handle him. I mean, what was your take on this, Dukes? Yeah, I think it was a really good performance from him. I mean, under so much pressure. The team was under so much pressure. They hadn't really scored a lot regularly recently. And yeah, their, their title hopes was not hanging by a thread, but definitely under serious pressure. So they had to respond. And Inzaghi will be pleased with a lot of elements in this game. Barella looked back to his best after a really difficult period for him. Five tackles and interceptions, three dribbles, four key passes, three wow. shots and two assists. So he could well have been star of the week as well if it hadn't been for Lautaro Martinez's hat-trick. Uh, and their attack clicked again. They've gone goalless for three games, as I said. They've now scored a remarkable 60 league goals. Uh, only five sides in Europe have scored more. That's Bayern, Liverpool, Man City, Dortmund and Leverkusen. Plenty of goal threat in the Bundesliga. And Robin Gosen's got an assist, actually. Yes, I believe his yes. first assist for Inter Milan, um, which is really pleasing. If they want to really step up their game over the next few years, upgrading on the left left wing-back slot, even though Perisic has been pretty good this year, was going to be crucial. So Gosen's well done to him. Now Inter Milan, I've got Liverpool on Tuesday before travelling to Torino next weekend. I've actually been watching Amazon All or Nothing Juventus this weekend because oh, yeah. Grace is away, so I've dominated the TV. <laughs> Turin looks beautiful as a city. Never really hear of Turin as like places that British tourists tend to go to, but it looks absolutely stunning. So might well make a trip to Turin, but I have mm. enjoyed Juventus All or Nothing so far. It's that Andrea Perlo year last year. Uh, and uh, Chiellini, what a guy so far. Really enjoyed his presence. Henry, what do you reckon everyone should go and watch now if they've enjoyed ERU for today? Oh, check out our Continental Club. Most improved... Mm. Um, players this season um, yeah I've really enjoyed that Vinicius etc some good names in there go check that out if you haven't already and yeah I'm sure we've got lots of wonderful oh the Bundesliga tax EFD explained really interesting article that one perfect go and watch that and all our other stuff and maybe the football pyramid as well Zach versus Joe from Saturday thanks very much for watching guys we'll catch you later on in the week have a great day bye